Hello and welcome to this video tutorial brought to you by tutvid.com. We're going to take a look at creating a photo gallery, a photo gallery that switches between the photos using a little thumbnail system. Um, it's actually a pretty simple gallery that we're going to be making due to time constraints, and file size constraints, and everything else. But this is a really basic photo gallery and it's a pretty neat one. Um, we're going to use some action script to create some rollovers and you know allow these images to fade in and out and it's really easy to add other images that you would like to add to the gallery at a further time down the road let's say you go on another photo shoot you bring back you know I don't know a whole bunch more photos you would like to add to your gallery or maybe it's only a couple whatever it is it's gonna be pretty easy to update everything uh, so let's take a look at it here is the finished gallery we're actually gonna start with a blank flash document. The only thing you're going to need is a few images to work with and there are a couple little things that you're going to need to do the images like in Photoshop uh, or Fireworks and I will tell you what that is in just a minute but it's not too bad. Let's export this and take a look here. You notice first thing our rollovers light up when we roll over them and you can click any image and it goes right to that image fades in and you can also click the image and it goes to the next image so we're going to take a look at how to create that exact gallery in just a second. What we're going to do is open up a new flash document, hit OK. And I'm going to open up my properties panel. The first thing we want to do, I selected the size button. We want to switch the dimensions to be 600 pixels wide by 400 tall. And we want to switch the frame rate to 16 frames per second. Hit OK. Here's our new edited size. Now, in the case of this photo gallery, the flash document is 600 pixels by 400 pixels. Now, I want the margin to be at least 100 pixels on any side, or the padding, really. And that's the side, or the space between the edge of my photos and the edge of my document. Actually, I, somewhere around 50 is good. So, in the case of this, I need to make sure that the longest side of my photo is no more then either 300 pixels tall or 500 pixels wide depending on what kind of image it is. If it's a panoramic shot you'll probably be doing width. If it's a picture of a person you're probably going to be doing height. So what I've done is I've gone into Photoshop and I've resized and created thumbnails by the way. I've resized a bunch of images to make sure that the height of all these images is 300 exactly. So first thing we're going to do is drag these images in. By the way, I also created these thumbnails, and these are just 50 pixel by 50 pixel thumbnails. I'm going to select all of these. I'm here in Bridge. Select them all. Click and drag and drop them right in the Library panel in Flash. And minimize Bridge to get it out of the way. You can see we have all of our images in here. Perfect. Let's rename our first layer here. Master Clip MC. You know how I like to work with a master movie clip kind of containing everything. Let's draw out a box. Box can be any color. I like to use this vibrant green for a lot of my uh, temporary drawings or things that are not really going to be seen. And we're also going to use the Align and Transform palette here. The hotkey for that is Command or Control K, where you can come up with the Window Align. But the important thing is, once you get the Align palette, make sure that you press the two stage button, make sure it's pressed on, and align this to the horizontal and vertical centers of your stage. All right, I'm gonna hit F8, which is the hotkey for converting this to a symbol. I'm gonna convert it to a movie clip and name it Master Clip MC. I'm gonna double click into it and delete the green rectangle, and I'm going to double click anywhere on my stage to back out of that movie clip. And you can see that it's completely disappeared. It's as if nothing is there at all but there is something there. Matter of fact, you can see it's converted that keyframe to an anchor keyframe. And it's given it a frame label. But don't worry about that. Let's uh, focus here on getting these images into our Flash document. The first thing we need to do is, well, select them all, obviously, and drag them out onto stage. We need to convert each one to its own individual movie clip so we can motion tween it and allow it to have that fade in and out of photos whenever you're going one to another. So I'm going to select the first one here. I'm going to hit F8, convert it to a symbol. I'm going to name this one IMG5. I'm converting these to movie clip symbols. 
I'm just converting it to a symbol, and then I'm going to hit the delete key. That just deletes it. F8, name this one IMG4, delete. Select this one, IMG3, delete. Select this one, IMG2, delete. And finally, image one, and I'll delete that too. Now, notice in the library we have a movie clip, then the bitmap, movie clip, then the bitmap, movie clip, then the bitmap. What I want to do is put these bitmaps away somewhere. I'm not going to be using the actual bitmaps in my Flash document, except for the fact that they're referenced in the movie clip itself. But I'm going to be using the movie clip. So what I'm going to do is come down to the bottom of your files, or your library panel, excuse me, and hit the New Folder button. I'm just going to name this folder JPEGs. I'm going to hold down the Control or the Command key if I'm on a Mac. I'm going to select all the JPEGs, not the thumb JPEGs, I'll take care of them later, and I'm just going to drag and drop them into that folder, just like that. Let's get back into that master movie clip that we made before, but we just deleted it. And obviously, there's nothing really to click on the stage. First thing I'm going to do is come to the properties panel, delete the frame label. So what we can do is come over here into our library, right click on the symbol, and just hit edit. That brings us right inside the symbol. You can see we're inside master clip MC. If you look at the little hierarchy of where exactly you are in your flash file, it's right there at the top of your file. We're going to double click this frame and rename it Photos. Hold down the Shift key and select every single one of the movie clip images you have in your library. Drag them out onto stage. They're all selected right now, so before we deselect them, back to the Align and Transform palette, and we're going to align to the horizontal and vertical centers once again. We're actually going to move them a little to one side. Uh, we're not going to worry about that right this minute. And all I'm going to do now is shut off the visibility of this layer. We'll get back to them in a minute. Let's create two more layers. Name one layer, Thumbs, and one layer, Thumb Action Script. And what we're going to do here is convert these thumbnails to movie clips as well. But we're, or not movie clips, excuse me, we're going to convert them to symbols, not movie clips. We're going to convert them to button symbols. So I'm going to select button. I'm going to say IMG, whoops, 5 BTN. And I'm just going to drag it aside. We don't want to delete these because we're actually going to use these. So IMG 4 BTN. Make sure you have right here in the type on the convert to symbol dialog box, type should be set to button. Once we have this done, you can select all five of the images and align them to the horizontal and vertical centers once again. We'll worry about distributing them um, evenly in just a minute. What we want to do though is select the keyframe so we have all of them selected and click on the top one and select color alpha and set the alpha to 45 or for the sake of simplicity, let's just set it to 50 for this. And what I need to do now is actually be able to tell where exactly I am on my stage. So I'm going to turn my photos back on. Problem is I can't really see the edge of my stage. So what I need to do is come back out here to scene one, select anywhere, and we're going to change our background color from white to the darkest gray here in the color palette. Not black, the darkest gray before it. All right, that's that. Double click back into your movie clip and select the, whoops, we have those on the thumb action script layer. I'm just going to click and hold on that keyframe and drag it down to the thumbs layer. That moves them right down. I'm just using shift and my arrow keys to nudge this straight down. Now you can see that these thumbnails are not going to fit between the edge of the photo and the edge of the stage. So we're going to leave it about right there and we're going to select the photos and we're going to nudge them up a little. Like that. That's perfect. Now we're going to select our thumbs again. I'm just going to select the top thumbnail and I'm going to move it over to about right there. So the center of the thumbnail almost lines up with the center of this image 5, this dark blue image. And I'm going to find the fifth image thumbnail, which is right here. I'm going to try to align that to about the same area. Now I'm going to select all five and in the align palette once again, 
over here there's this little word space I'm gonna select the one that says space evenly horizontally and just like that I've got my thumbnails lined up nicely I'm gonna select them all because this one on the end seems to have gotten out of order and I'm going to say align top edges and that aligns the top edges to the stage. I want to uncheck that stage button in this case and say align top edges. That aligns the top edges of them to each other. So now they all line up perfectly. Now what I want to do is select each individual button and give it an instance name. So I can just say IMG1 for, or I'm going to say thumb1 really. Thumb1. And I will just copy the word thumb so I can quickly paste it into each other one. Thumb two, thumb three, thumb four, and thumb five. So now each of these have their own instance name. All right, let's take a look here at making these thumbnails have some kind of a rollover state. Now they are buttons, so we could just simply go in and add a rollover state, but that's I already you know have a video on how you can go in and use an over and a down state. So let's look at a, an easy way actually to use Action Script to do it. Let's go over here to Thumb AS layer, Action Script layer. Hit F9. That brings up our Actions palette or panel, and we need to remember here the instance names: Thumb One, Thumb Two, Thumb Three, Thumb Four, Thumb Five. It's pretty simple. So now let's start typing some actions. We're gonna say Thumb One dot on roll over. This is case sensitive, so you need to have that capital R and capital O. That's a period, by the way. Thumb one dot on roll over equals function, open and close parenthesis, open curly bracket. I'm going to hit enter or return twice, close curly bracket, and I'm going to come up to line two in between those two open and close curly brackets. And I'm going to say this dot underscore alpha equals 100. So what I'm saying is, when somebody rolls over thumb one, I want Flash to execute the function of making this alpha level, the alpha level of this object, which is thumb one, 100%. I'm gonna copy this entire thing, I'm gonna paste it right below it, and I'm gonna change this to roll out. So I'm gonna say on roll out, this.alpha equals 50 again. So when you roll out, I want you to equal 50 again. Hit F9 to close up the Actions palette. F9, by the way, is the hotkey for the Actions palette, where you can help with the window actions. Let's just export this movie real quick. And we've got some kind of a problem going on. We'll take a look at it in a minute. Let me see. What did I do wrong? Oh, yes, of course. I placed these actions on one of these buttons, I'm sure. Yes, I did. You need to make sure you don't do that. Command or Control X to cut that. We want to place this on the frame, the keyframe of Thumb Action Script. Check the syntax. Script now contains no errors, no problems as far as I can see. Let's try exporting it again. There we go. And when I roll over Thumb 1, what do you know? It lights up. It goes back to 100% alpha, so it appears to be more vibrant in color than the rest, which in fact it is because you've got it back to 100% alpha. All right, I'm just going to select this entire thing, Command or Control C to copy it, and now I need to paste it for each other thumbnail, for thumbs two, three, four, and five. One little thing you need to make sure you do is hit the return key here and then paste it. Don't paste it right in front of this curly bracket, you see? If I do that right here, that's going to register as an error. Okay, you can't do that. have to make sure that you space that out. So. There we go. We've got five of them. Now it really looks confusing. But you see, we only need this for thumb one, so we can take this part for thumb two. So I'm just going to come in here and change the one to a two. And I'm going to come here and change this one to a three. I'm going to come here and change this one to a four. And come here and change this one to a five. Check it for errors. No errors. And now, Commander Control Enter, by the way, is what I'm doing to quickly preview the movie. And now all of our thumbnails light up, and they're all buttons, so that's great. Come up here to Control and Test Movie. It's another way to get that quick SWF preview and have your action script working like that. Quite nice. Okay, 
Now let's select all five of the images by selecting the photos keyframe here and hit F8 to convert them to a symbol. We're going to convert it to a movie clip symbol though, and we're just going to name it Photos MC for movie clip. Hit enter. These are all inside of their own movie clip. With this movie clip selected, we want to change the instance name to Photos MC. And I have the M and C capital, by the way. And remember, when you're working with instance names, they are case sensitive. So you have to be uh, conscientious of what you type into these text boxes because if I were to put this MC in lowercase and then the action script put uppercase it wouldn't work so I'm gonna leave it uppercase here because that's usually the way I work with my stuff and it will keep me from making any dumb mistakes so now let's do the little tedious part which is creating the transitions between these photos let's double click inside or into the photos.mc and you can see we have all five of these photos in here. Select the first keyframe. Now right click on all the photos. You've just selected all the photos by clicking the thumbnail or the keyframe, excuse me. Right click and hit distribute to layers. You can see each image is on its own layer. And layer one now has nothing on it. So select layer one and click the trash can and just get rid of it. Okay, now what we want to do is well first create two new layers, name one frame labels and create another and name it action script. We want to select these five keyframes and drag them out one. We want our first frame to be completely blank. And I'm going to click on the action script keyframe, hit F9 and I'm going to place a stop action here. So let's stop, open close parenthesis, semicolon. Hit F9 to make that go away. Don't worry about putting a frame label there. But what's going to happen now is when the Flash movie loads, none of the images are going to show up immediately. You're going to, it's going to have to wait until somebody chooses a thumbnail. So what we can do here is select image one and hold on the Alt key or the Option key if you're on a Mac, click that keyframe and drag out to frame 16 because we want there to be 15 frames in between our photo transitions. So we want this to go from being completely invisible to completely visible. Now the reason it looks funny over here with all these other images is because I've got all these keyframes stacked up on top of it. I'm going to drag them out to the frame beyond frame 16. So frame 17 I've just dragged them out to. So now we have our photo here going to our photo. Our photo all the way over on frame 2 we're going to click the photo and we're going to come down here to our color options, select alpha and reduce the alpha to zero. Now I'm going to right click in between those two keyframes, create the motion tween, and now you can see we have a motion tween going from nothing to a full image. Now here at frame 15, I am going to duplicate this stop action. I'm going to hold down the Alt or the Option key and just drag that keyframe out to frame 16. So what's going to happen is when your movie does play, it's going to play to the first image, load the first image, and stop. All right. Now we can tell Flash to start playing at frame two by placing a key or a frame label, excuse me. We need to place a keyframe, F6, or right click and hit insert keyframe. Select that keyframe, and down in the properties panel here, we have a frame label text box. I'm just going to name this IMG1. All right, so now we just need to do the same thing with the rest of these images. Hold down Alt, drag out 15, plus 17 would be 32. Just like that. I'm going to select these three, drag them out to frame 33. Select the ball image, reduce the alpha to zero, create my motion tween, duplicate that stop action. The stop action should be on the last frame of your animation when the photo is completely at 100. Not after it. If it goes after it, this is what we would see. So you definitely don't want that. You want it to be on the last, last uh, frame of your animation. Select that frame label and do well actually no, don't duplicate it. You don't want to duplicate it. We can just select the frame where your next photo would start coming in. So in this case, image two is going to start at zero alpha here on frame 17. So I'm going to hit F6 or right click and hit insert. Whoops, not frame. We're going to insert a keyframe. And we're going to put a frame label here. It's IMG2. So now flash, we can use action script to say go to and play image one and we'll play this. Or we can say go to and play image two, and it will play image two. So now we're going to set it up for image three. And 15 plus 33 is 48. So there we go with that. 
drag this out to 49, select that image, edit the alpha, create your motion tween, duplicate that stop action, pop a keyframe in, give it the frame label of image 3, and that's it. So let's do it with this one. 49 plus 15, go up to 64. Drag this image out to 65. Select this image, reduce the alpha. Create our motion tween. Duplicate that stop action and place yet another frame label. And finally, we're up to the last one and 65 plus 15, 80. That's pretty easy. Reduce that alpha, create our motion tween. Insert a frame label of image 5, and of course, place a stop action at the very end. I just did F5 there just to make it the timeline look good. It just brought frames out. It really serves no purpose at all. And what we have here is a timeline of images. When we say go to and play image 3, Flash will jump to here and play image 3. When we say play image 1, it will jump to here and play image 1. So now we have this all set up, jump around and play. The problem is we need some way for Flash to, when it gets to the end, turn around and come back to the very beginning, which is why I reserved this first frame. So what we're going to do is actually create, we're going to hit F6 here, create another keyframe for image 5, and we're going to create another action script keyframe. So we're going to select that keyframe for the action script layer, and we're going to use this code. Go to and play open parenthesis or open yeah open parenthesis quotes img1 close the quotes close the parenthesis semicolon okay no errors so now when it gets to this stop action and we want it to play again it's going to bump over to this action which says hey go back over here to image 1 and play that brilliant so come out here to master clip MC I believe that's all we need to do there inside of photos movie clip now what we want to do is set up our buttons so we can click and go to any of those photos so select your button you actually have to click it I can't emphasize enough how much you have to actually select the button you have to press it with your mouse not the keyframe the button open up the actions palette and type this action with me I'm just selecting the one button we're going to say on release open curly bracket oops enter enter close curly brackets we're going to say photos mc remember that's the instance name of that movie clip holding all the photos photos mc dot go to and play play and we're just going to say img1 semicolon check it for errors no errors all right i'm going to copy this i'm going to move by the way that's what that action script looks like i kind of had it moved off screen there i'm going to move it partially off screen and i'm just going to duplicate it here but for this image i'm going to say go to and play image two for here i'm going to say go to and play image three so we've got it there select this one go to and play image 4 and select this one and say go to and play image 5 so let's preview this real quick you see all of our stuff lights up I'm going to select that image it goes to and plays image 3 image 5 image 1 image 2 now there's really no point to setting up our little turnaround thing in the photos what I mean by the little turnaround thing is this little bit of code here at the end where it says you know go to and play image one unless we do something that would require us to use that code because right now these thumbnails are more than capable of just telling flesh hey I know where I want to go in the timeline just take me there so let's use something that actually will provide an alternative means of navigating through your photo gallery and it's actually pretty quick to do let's just make a new layer here and name it controls or control AS control action script select that keyframe open up your actions palette and let's say photos MC dot on press 
equals function, open close parenthesis, open curly bracket, close curly bracket. In here, we're going to say photos mc dot play. Just like that. What that's going to do is every time we press a photo, it's just going to play from that stop action and play right to the next stop action. So when it gets to that last frame, it's just going to play that go to and play image one. So it's going to loop right from image five to image one. So I can click, 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 and now that we're image five, click, and it goes back to image one. Whereas if we didn't have that code, that wouldn't work. So that's it. That is how you create a very basic image gallery. This has been a little bit of a uh, long tutorial, but I hope you learned how to do it. Um, there's actually is quite a bit to doing it, and it can get a little complicated. So I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something from it. I hope you <laughs> sat tight through the whole thing. And uh, hey, if you followed along, I'm sure you learned a great deal of really good stuff. And uh, thank you very much for watching. Please check out the website. That is www. T U T V I D dot com, tutvid dot com. Thank you for watching.